Hi, welcome back to The Big Ranch Show. Thank you for joining me. Today we're going to discuss the terrible tragedy that's taken place in this country. Just a few days ago, Hurricane Helene hit the Florida coast. Flooded cities and towns up and down the Florida coastline before it came on shore. Then it proceeded to make its way into the mountains of North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, basically parts of Appalachia. And 200 people are dead. Hundreds are still missing. Or unaccounted for the last information I saw and it's an absolute tragedy who would have thought a storm would get 500 miles inland and hit an area of an elevation of 2,000 feet above sea level or more and cause the destruction that it did. From I've read, towns like Ashenville, North Carolina, were basically wiped off the map by floodwaters. People had moved there. Now, apparently, Ashenville does have a history with bad weather, but nothing on this level. Why, you might ask. Now, I don't know the answer. I'm not a scientist. But I can tell you what I see. I see hurricanes getting stronger every time they hit the coast. I see them making it further inland than the last one. I remember when Hurricane Rita hit the Louisiana and Texas Gulf Coast. I remember living some 300 miles inland in Nacogdoches, Texas. That storm was expected to die out as it got north of just a little north of Houston. It made it 300 miles into Nacogdoches is still a category one. Now we have a storm that's made it all the way, you know, that's caused havoc all the way inland as far as 500 miles at an elevation of of 2,000 uh, 2, feet. The storm, the storm was terrible. It was a category four when it hit the coast. And it was still sitting at about a category two when it made its way into Georgia. These storms are supposed to dissipate when they hit land. This one took a lot longer to do so. As a result, hundreds of, or 200 people are dead from Florida into North Carolina. And I want to tell you this right now. After the storm hit and ravaged these areas, I saw people talking about, oh, well, they're red states. Who cares? I'm sorry. When a tragedy hits this country, we are not blue people. We are not red people. We are Americans. And we're supposed to band together to help our fellow Americans, regardless of their political ideology. And it absolutely just irks me to know that some people would rather not help these people just because they happen to live in red voting states. And you know, if you watch this channel, you know exactly how I feel about red states and about Republicans. You know how I feel. 
but also you know that I am caring and that I want everybody to be taken care of in this country. So to hear that people are talking like we, we shouldn't help them. It's a, it's a line of BS I'm not willing to listen to. But people out there trying to make political points off of this tragedy are absolutely disgusting to me. Matt Gates posted a post on Twitter talking about how, you know, why don't they send, you know, send, send the same kind of money to Florida that they did to Ukraine when he's talking about the, you know, federal government and Congress. Well, get this. Last Friday, there was a vote that passed a bill to send $18.8 billion to FEMA to help Florida and other states ravaged by this hurricane. Matt Gates and his fellow Florida Republicans voted no. Every last one of them. So yes, I believe anything that we have to do to get these people taken care of and made whole again, I believe it's the federal government's responsibility to get it done. I believe if you have a, the means and the ability to help without hampering the efforts, then get over there to the southeast and start helping. By all means. Your fellow Americans need you, and we need to stand together at this fairly unprecedented time. There are people still without power, without cell phones, or any kind of phone service. There are entire communities that have been blocked off to the outside world. And you got people trying to make political points. Now, the United Cajun um, Navy, they're a group out of, uh, you know, out of Louisiana, of course, and they've made their way over there shortly after the hurricane hit to help. Extreme meteorologist Reed Timmer been has been out that way helping. He's also been helping pass along information to other groups of people to get help to the people that need it. These are just two of the people that I have seen on social media. There was a man from South Carolina that went into North Carolina and into the mountains in his own helicopter with his son to rescue people. And a local firefighter, a local fire chief threatened the man with arrest for interfering in a rescue operation when he himself was actually out there rescuing people and being as safe about it as he possibly could. He flew all the way from where he was at in South Carolina to go help people, to go bring them food and water, only to be threatened with arrest by a local police, I mean, a local fire chief who had a, an, had something up his rear end, claiming it was his operation. Well, here's the thing. This guy was working with another organization who had their own rescue efforts going on. He had worked with them since he got had gotten to the area. He ended up leaving and coming back a few days later when it was clear that he was able to come back. It's highly disappointing. But I'm glad to see that some Americans are showing up for their fellow Americans that they don't even know. People they don't even know, they're just showing up to help. And I think that's what we need to do. These people are going to need help for a long time. Many people have lost everything. Biden administration immediately 
started sending funds and help to Florida and the areas hit by this hurricane. Like on the day the hurricane hit, Biden had already worked on, on getting the executive stuff taken care of for um, help for Florida before the storm even made landfall. Because remember, the one thing you have to remember about the federal government is they cannot release funds or help or assistance to states until it is requested by their governors. Ron DeSantis knew what was coming. He was quick to make sure it was prepared and ready to go. The other states weren't, they didn't expect it to be this bad, so they weren't as prepared. Not to mention, from what I noticed from the the cone of certainty, I guess, you, or uncertainty, I guess you could call it even, I, I noticed that the storm was off track a little. It was more east, it was a little more off to the east. Because what the original things I saw was going through straight through um, Georgia and then turning off to the west a little bit. That didn't really seem to happen. But it also brought a lot more rain to areas that, than they expected. I don't want to hear this, well, they shouldn't live in a hurricane zone when they're 2,000 feet up above the ocean. I, I don't want to hear it. What I want, though, is for Americans to understand that we're we're all different, but at the, same, at the end of the day, we're all Americans, and that we need to be helping each other. Anyhow, y'all have a great day. I'll see you down the road.